Heart Machine's Hyperlight Drifter is one of my favourite games of all time, and an out of nowhere announcement just dropped for the studio's follow up game, Solar Ash Kingdom, along with a teaser trailer, so I'm needless to say very excited. Despite that, I've seen very little discussion of the game online, so I've decided to do this quick breakdown of the trailer and everything else we know about the new game so far. Right off the bat, Heart Machine have gone with a new publisher in Annapurna Interactive. It's impossible to say how hands on with the actual game development Annapurna is, but their other titles show Solar Ash Kingdom will be in good company because three indie Game of the Year contenders were all published by them last year alone. Gone Home, Donut County and Florence, and they even had a hand in porting Journey to PC, which is an almost perfect parallel to Hyperlight's atmosphere. This bit is a visual example of what my heart started doing after seeing the previous message. And immediately you can see the biggest surprise of the reveal, that Heart Machine has gone from gorgeous pixel art to creating a lo-fi but full 3D world. I'm going to let this part play out the first time because there's just so much to go back and talk about, but it looks like the Hyperlight Drifter art style has transitioned perfectly to 3D. They've seemingly kept with the approach of having distinct biomes, each with their own species of creatures, and the signature purple and blue colour scheme looks beautiful, but it's that dithering on the moon that has me thinking Heart Machine are going to nail it. Now skating in on a pillar of what I assume to be the titular Solar Ash is our new protagonist, bearing a lot of similarities to the Drifter, but also a lot of differences. Masked and caped, but possibly not blue-skinned, I would assume her to be another member of the same drifter species, but she also looks more slender or feminine, and the glowing highlights coupled with something we'll see in a second makes me think she'll have some sort of specialty in holograms or projections. We also don't see the return of the drifter's little drone companion. It's important to note that none of this looks like anything approaching gameplay, and I doubt the smooth looking ground skating the protagonist is doing will be player controllable, although I'd be very happy if it was. Instead I imagine it will be only for cutscene moments like this one and giving an in-world justification to the dashing mechanic. Having that kind of speed available at all times would be a huge change of direction, and knowing Heart Machine's record of making insanely cool things that get cut from the game completely, we might not end up seeing any of this sequence in-game. So the new drifter seems to summon her weapon out of a hard light bracelet, and it sort of projects out from her fist rather than just having a physical sword like in the first game further leaning into some sort of hologram mastery. I can't help noticing she's also got three more of those bracelets that could turn into weapons if need be, but maybe that's wishful thinking. And there we have it. If you had any doubt that this game was set in Hyperlight Drifter's world, here's the return of the signature purple evil that is Judgment, looking just as huge and threatening in 3D, and then cut to a very stylish title card, which incorporates the new Drifter's weapon and another circular object I can't identify. Could be the bracelet with crackles of light energy coming off of it, or a riff on the compass from the first game showing the layout of the world branching off the main hub, in this case implying six branches instead of just the four cardinal directions. So going back to the meat of the info, the location previews, the first one we see is this stunning pink and purple pine forest area. This is the part of the video that sums up Hyperlight Drifter to me. It evokes almost exactly the same image as I had in my head playing that game, with how the nature is hemmed in by the ruins of an old civilization. What looks like a high speed train rail has collapsed into the water, possibly contaminating the water supply for the moss deer that seem to come along with this region. There's also the spectacle of some of the ruined buildings floating in mid-air unaffected by gravity, which is a pretty straightforward way of showing that maybe the world isn't doing so great. Zero gravity sections maybe? Then there's the blink and you miss it figure in the lower right, a hooded and cat-tailed figure that seems to be summoning some kind of glowing icicles. I thought they were cat ears at first, but as the camera pans you can see they're not attached to the figure's head. This guy looks very similar in style to the NPCs in the first game's town making me wonder if he could be an explorer, or even a rival drifter. The next location shares a similar palette to the frog's water city in the first game, but couldn't be more different on closer inspection. In fact, none of the locations or creatures in the trailer seem to be adapted from the first game. They're all new, best I can tell, and this scene in particular has this brand new desert oasis feeling to it. Looking past the primitive bone and scrap huts, you can see the devastation of a huge space battle in the sky, as well as an aurora, which makes for one hell of a skybox. The spaceship really does push that new intergalactic theme and makes me think my zero gravity section prediction isn't too out there, and if you look closer those destroyed stations look a hell of a lot like the game's logo from the title screen. 
The creatures in this area are these adorable little turtle animals that look like mossy rocks until they pop their heads up, but they're obviously not the same fisher-gatherer civilization that made the boats, houses and hammocks in the area, so I hope they didn't suffer the same fate as the otters did. We also see a huge bleached skeleton that would have come from some colossal monster, such as the one seen in the next location, a mountain top scattered with smoke billowing techno columns that could be some kind of rocket boosters maybe? The Colossus flying around looks like a skeletal version of the Breath of the Wild Dragons, which is great because they were my favourite parts of that game. And despite the heat haze they're giving off, there seems to be some kind of trees growing in the craters in the ground. On the right is probably the biggest confirmation that space travel will be a part of Solar Ash Kingdom's lore, a still powered up and looking practically brand new, at least by Hyperlight World's standard of abandoned technology, it looks like some kind of escape or hibernation pod, possibly from the larger ship we saw earlier. The final biome we're shown is this mashup of a monastery and fungal landscape, including these cool trypophobia triggering giant mushroom skeletons. The monastery seems much older than any of the other ancient relics in the trailer, looking like something that could have come from our time period, and it reminds me of the bird religions area in Hyperlight. The creature we see in this area fits well with the gothic architecture, looking almost like something out of Bloodborne with its long black coat and pointed hood, perhaps some sort of caretaker of the abbey? The final shot of the trailer features this biome again, with the same sort of fungus growth in the background as the drifter slides along. As we get to Judgment again, you can see he's covered in and breaking out of a kind of eggshell, perhaps hinting that this is him just after being reborn, which would lend credibility to my theory on the events of Hyperlite Drifter being part of a cycle that both Judgment and the Drifter will always be reborn into. It was inspired by Legend of Zelda after all, and I'll link to that at the end of the video if you want to watch it. This is supported by the devs saying Solar Ash isn't a sequel, despite being set in the same world. I know I called it a sequel in the title, sorry but that was just a lot less wordy than the successor to Hyperlight Drifter that takes place in the same universe. Another theory could be that Judgment Shell is some kind of meteor or small moon that he's breaking out of. It would go with the celestial theming and he is very prominently composed in front of another one of those gorgeous dithered moons. So my final thoughts after breaking down the trailer, other than excitement, are that Hyperlight Drifter is committing fully to the half-joking idea that's been going around indie games for years, where the coolest way to do a sequel to a 16-bit tribute game is to skip forward and make a 3D 64-bit tribute game. It's something that's always talked about in relation to Shovel Knight, and Risk of Rain has also embraced it for their sequel. But Solar Ash Kingdom looks like it's made that transition beautifully, both focusing more on their own art style than what a 64-bit console could feasibly manage. That said, without seeing any gameplay, we know nothing about how the game will play yet, other than that Heart Machine has confirmed that yes, it will be fully 3D with a third person camera. I have to wonder how the tight combat gameplay will be changed to fit a 3D world. I have full faith that the devs will make it work, but it makes you wonder whether they'll take inspiration from character action games, and how that will feel compared to the original Simple Combat, that was never as involved as it would have to be for that sort of genre or if they'll try and directly bring the same combat over from the first, with just a tweak here and there. If you've been listening to the background music throughout, you might have immediately noticed that artist Disasterpiece is back on board for the sequel, which is fantastic as that was a huge part of what made the original so unique. Then there's the hint from this tweet about when the new game will be coming out. It's a bit hard to tell what it could mean without a frame of reference. To me saying, there's a way to go before the game is done, implies it's deep in development and would be out sooner than I expected. But it could also be intended to lower expectations in the age of games like Hades and Apex coming out the same day they're announced. There's simply no way of knowing without seeing the mindset it was written in, and then of course there's the old game dev saying that the last 20% takes just as long as the first 80%. That was my Solar Ash Kingdom trailer breakdown. If you'd like to catch up on the story of the first game before the sequel comes out, I've linked my analysis video in the description. And as always, likes, comments and subscribes are always appreciated, especially comments on this one. I'd love to hear if you've spotted or interpreted anything new that I missed. And thank you for watching.